Hey guys, it's Gary Pickren here, Blair Cato. Um, as you can probably see, I'm starting to do my legal tips via video now. So hopefully it'll make it easier. You just push play and don't even have to look at me. If you don't want to, you just listen to it. So hopefully it'll make it quicker and easier for you to get this information. Um, last week, as you know, on the legal tip we did, we talked about not closing at the end of the month um, because of all the headaches and hassles it causes you. Um, so I promised you in that blog post that I would talk about intermentress because intermentress seems to be the reason most people try to close at the end of the month. I think it's misunderstood and I think there's really not that big of a savings that people think that people think there is. Um, and so really there's no reason to save 20 bucks to put up with a headache. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you about interim interest. Um, as you know, interest is paid in arrears on the loan, meaning it's paid backwards. So you pay interest from the day of closing to the next first day of the next month. So if I close on May 15th or 16th, I think the day 16th, if I close on May 16th, my first payment wouldn't, uh, I would pay interim interest until June 1st for my first payment due in July. Um, it's interesting to know you, as soon as you close, you get possession of the house. So just delaying the closing from May 16th to May 31st just means I don't get the house for 20, for what, 15 more days. Um, so you kind of get what you pay for and you kind of, you got to pay to live. So, you know, paying the 20 bucks or whatever it is, it just gets me the access to the house earlier. So that's kind of a silly argument for a reason to delay anyway. But, um, the reason we have interim interest is if you close on the 16th um, and didn't have interim interest, your first payment would be due June 16th, 30 days later. So what they do is they collect interest from the day of closing to the first day of the month to cover that interest. And then when you pay your payment July 1st, you're paying the whole month of June's interest. And that way your payment's set for the whole 360 days or 360 months. You're not paying the first payment interest on 45 or 46 days. And then every payment after that would be for the month. So, that's why they do it. So I'm going to show you really quickly on this chart here. Um, I think I already had it up right here. Interim interest. Assuming you want to try to close at the end of May and we had a $150,000 loan, even at 5%, which is I think a little bit above what most people are closing at now, your interest is about $20 a day. So it's really not that big of a savings to push to closing to the last day of the month. So let me give you an example here. Uh, most people try to close on May 31st or yeah, May 31st, last day of the month. And if you close the last day of the month, you pay one day of interim interest. Your first payment is going to be due July 31st, or excuse me, July 1st, and you're going to get possession of the house on May 31st. If you pushed it back just one day and closed on May 30, when it's not so busy, your client's going to pay two days of interim interest. And guess what? Their payment's still due on July 1st. It costs them an additional $20. They close on the 30th, but here's the key. They get possession of the house on the 30th. So it's not like they pay for it and they don't get possession of it. If they pushed it back another day to May 29th, when it would be a whole lot less crowded, and a whole lot less uh, busy for them and they have a better closing experience, they're paying three days of interim interest. So now they're paying $60 of interim interest versus 20, so another $40. And they get the house two days earlier. Um, payment's still due on July 1st. Now, if you're really concerned about somebody not having enough money to close, I would argue if they don't have 20 bucks, they probably don't need to buy a house, first of all. But even assuming they, they still want to buy the house and they only have 20 bucks. Uh, June 1st would even be a better day for you to close because here you pay zero days of interim interest and your first payment is due July 1st. If you close on July 2nd, you actually get a credit back. And what this means is instead of your client paying $20.83 uh, of interim interest for closing on the 31st, they would actually get a credit of $20.83 to close on June 2nd for the day they didn't have the um, loan and their payment still is due July 1st. And that goes the same way for the third, fourth, or fifth. The credits can go up for five days here. You can get two days credit, three days credit, four days credit, and have your payment still due on July 1st. So you see here the payment, regardless whether you close on May 29th or June 5th, the payment is still due on June, July 1st. They get possession the day they close, and the amount of interim interest we're talking about is minimal. Um, one thing I will add here is that if they wanted to, on these four days down here at the bottom, they could decide by talking with their lender to go ahead and pay interest from June 2nd to the 28th if they wanted to do that at closing and then not have their first payment due to August 1st. So it gives them a little bit more options. So anyway, my point is talk to your clients, see what they want. Interim interest really isn't that big of a deal. And it's certainly not a reason to delay closing to the end of the month. Close when your client wants to close and don't, don't get them in this busy time of the year of closing at the end of the month. Hope that helps you. Talk to you real soon.